A man that we all know and love, Dr. Seuss, had this amazing quote. Be who you are and see what you feel. Because those that mind don't matter, and those that matter don't mind. Simple and powerful. Be who you want to be. Say what you want to say. Wear what you want to wear. Talk how you want to talk. Be your full, 100% authentic self. And by doing so, you will identify the people that you want in your life. People that encourage you to be yourself. The people that encourage you to love yourself and to grow. Those are the people that you want in your inner circle. And those that truly love you, they're going to show themselves in your life. Because those are the people that are encouraging you to be yourself. They're encouraging you to love yourself. They're encouraging you to grow and become a better version of yourself. Those are the kind of people that you want in your life. Be who you are. Be who you want to be. Say what you want to say. Dress how you want to dress. Talk how you want to talk. Be your full, 100% authentic self. All right. Coming at you, episode two of Green Bay Greg. Here we go. Let's fix some stuff here. First of all, got to give this to Mike right away. Didn't take him long. Took him about eh, 20 seconds into the episode to chime in. Appreciate it, Mike. Uh, I am going to try to do a little better <laughs> this episode to uh, interact with you guys that are that are watching slash listening. Got a little caught up last time in the first episode. Got a, got on a roll. Let's just say the uh, train was going downhill, and I uh, didn't exactly bring the brakes. So, uh, what I wanted, to, what we're going to get into today is kind of same as last week. We're going to talk about some things going on in the world of sports, things going on in the world, uh, and we're going to get it from Green Bay Greg's perspective. Uh, one thing I realized after watching last week's episode about 415 times because I overanalyze everything and overthink everything. Spent a lot of time talking about um, my uh, friendship with Mike, uh, Mike on the mic, uh, and uh, you know, ripping on him a little bit. And uh, by the way, I watched his episode, which airs before mine. Uh, he did an amazing job. I honestly cannot rip on it for episode two. Did a great job. Um, we're gonna. That's on the RTF Sports Network Thursdays. Um, so coming at you on. Uh, let me, let me just let me just get that up here. Let me just let's just bring this up. There we go. All right, look at that. Kind of starting, you know, if I didn't know any better, it almost looked like I almost knew what I was doing. So I want to talk about Matt, Benzie's bit. Benzie's bit also comes on the RTF network before my show. We're all a part of Twist, though we can sports talk. You can find us on Twist Twist Sports Talk. Uh and uh all the other uh, social media outlets through RTF Sports Network, through Facebook, uh, all our Facebook pages, our um, Twist Sports Talk, our website. But uh, you know, the funny thing about Matt is, in our in our three man group of friends, Matt's kind of known as the mediator. Uh, you got Mike on one side, me on the other, and we'll argue about just about anything. Uh, Matt kind of tries to find the middle ground sometimes. Although we have a couple, we have had a couple of episodes on Twist where Matt and I did get it, did go at it. Um, Funny thing about Matt is Matt's 14, maybe 15 years younger than me. Uh, he's got a wedding coming up, which I'm honored to be standing up in. I just can't wait till they do an individual picture of him and I uh, at the wedding. It'll look like a ventriloquist and a ventriloquist dummy. Matt's a little short. Uh, but if someone would have told me about two and a half years ago, see that guy over there? His name is Matt Benz. You and him are going to be inseparable a couple of years from now. I would have looked at you and I would have said, yeah, that sounds about right. The guy needs some friends. Uh, no, Matt's a great guy. Matt is, uh, you know, one of these guys that, uh, you know, wears his heart on his sleeve and uh, he just does does more good than uh, than I can than I can talk about uh, on this show. But uh, great guy, it's fun to fun to jab with. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so that's so that's the three of us. Our three shows, three individual shows, and then obviously we have Twist that comes at you on the RTF Sports Network Monday afternoons. We do it on Facebook as well as well as Twist, um, the Week in Sports Talk, Twist Sports Talk website. I want to jump into right away topic number one on the sports talkers. Uh, 
first thing we're going to get into is the match. Yesterday, you had Tiger and Peyton Manning against Phil Mickelson and Tom Brady. Tell you what, for a sports fan like me, it lived up to the hype. Lived up to everything that I expected it to. Even though the weather was horrible, these guys went out there and they golfed. They didn't have to. Any PGA Tour event would have been canceled, postponed, or delayed. These guys did it. They raised $20 million. The highlight of the entire time, obviously, was Tom Brady's shot from about 100, 110 yards out on seven. And uh, what was fun about that was leading up to that point, and I was doing it with Matt and Mike as well, everyone on the planet was talking about how they could golf as well as Tom Brady. And in all honesty, a lot of people probably could have. Tom Brady was a little nervous, wasn't you know hitting the ball all that well, couldn't find a fairway you know, if, if he'd have paid for it. But then he hit that shot, and then he came on hot, and he was doing well. But it was fun watching one of the greatest quarterbacks. I said one of the one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, you know, come down to our level on the golf course. We all do that, but that's what makes golf so fascinating. That's what makes golf so great. It's a sport where you can have one good shot and eighty bad shots. And you're going to come out again because you know you can do that good shot again. Full disclosure, I, I um, <laughs> yeah, we'll have to make that happen. Bet you Tom Brady's never hit a hole in one on a par four. Uh, and, and that's kind of my point is I was luckier than lucky. Talk about winning the lottery. About 20 years, a little more than 20 years ago, I was in a best ball scramble. It was a charity event in Wisconsin. I was golfing with three really good friends of mine. We're doing best ball. So one guy hits a shot, um, or all four guys hit a shot. You take the best shot, and everyone hits from that spot. When my buddy lied up on the island hole, par four, lied up right before the water. Perfect shot. So the other three of us just went for it, hauled off. One buddy went a little bit to the left. One guy went to the right. But we were still in a perfect shot. And I hauled off. The wind picked up as I was in my backswing. Ball carried. Bounce, bounce in the hole. I got a hole in one on a par four. I've been golfing ever since then because of that one shot. I'm not a good golfer. I'm not a great golfer. By no means is anyone ever going to come up to me and ask me for golf lessons. But that one shot, that one moment brings me to the, keeps me coming back to the golf course all the time. And that's what golf is all about. That's what made it so fun is watching these guys become human. Next thing I wanted to talk about was the Coca-Cola 600. Now, in full disclosure, growing up in my early 20s, uh, I was more of an indie car fan. I know, what, I know what you're thinking. I had no idea that I even cared about auto racing. Well, my uncle uh, would go you know, on his Harley with his buddies every year from Milwaukee down to Indianapolis for the Indianapolis 500. Once me and my cousins got older, <laughs> absolutely, dog, trust me. Trust me, dog. That, that was that was a blind squirrel, and then some. That hole in one. <laughs> All right. So the Coca Cola Six Hundred. Um, I was more of an IndyCar fan, but you know the Coca Cola Six Hundred, the NASCAR event. Um, it's done on the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, and it's done at night under the lights. That was the big thing. They didn't directly compete with the Indy Five Hundred. Indy Five Hundreds during the day. Uh, and the Coca-Cola 600 would be at night. So um, I was, you know, kind of flipping on. I, I'm not going to watch 600 miles of auto racing. But what I thought was fascinating was that there was a 90-minute rain delay. The event did not end until close to midnight. Uh, and what was great about it was these guys now realize in this new climate we live in, they're doing two races a week, Wednesdays and Sundays uh, on most weeks. But what these guys are realizing is you're going to have to deal with inclement weather sometimes, just like the golfers did uh, earlier in the day. They, they uh, plowed through. They had to sit there in their cars. And then uh, Brad Kozlowski ends up winning. Don't ask me to spell that. I think I could, but I'm not going to try but uh, Brad Kozlowski ended up winning. The point of it is what I really like to see on these guys, because like I mentioned in episode one of Green Bay, Greg, and I'll mention it again, is I'm not so much a fan of looking at the scoreboard, cheering for a team on the scoreboard, other than, you know, go pack go. I'm a fan of stories. And what I really enjoy about not only the golf, but the Coca-Cola 600 was these guys know that people are just itching for sports. 
People want their sports. If you're a NASCAR fan, you've been looking forward all day to the Coca-Cola 600. If you're a golf fan like me, you're looking forward to that event. And you see rain. And you know that if it, this would have been any other year, they would have either postponed it or canceled it. But these guys plug through. And I really appreciate that out of them. Uh, and I'm sure the NASCAR fans would have, you know, really, really enjoyed that and appreciate that well. Next thing I wanted to get into is the Dallas Cowboys in this ongoing saga with Dak Prescott. Here's the thing, Dak. You're not a top five quarterback. Uh, and I know that's certain of my friends. Let's just be honest. Mike's one of them. Mike's probably the number one guy. You know, he's going to hate that I make this comparison. But there are only two quarterbacks in the league last year that threw for 30-plus touchdowns and had zero fourth-quarter comebacks. One of them was Kurt Cousins. And one of them was Dak Prescott. Kurt Cousins led his team to the playoffs. Dak Prescott did it. Dak, I get it. You are the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. You got drafted, not in the first round where you get guaranteed money. Not in the first round where you get that guarantee, that, that fifth year option by the team. You got drafted in the later rounds in the third round. You know what? Should have played better in college. Should have been one of those top. <laughs> this Okay, I think this is funny. Mike Malone says to me, stop wasting time with the Cowgirls. Dude, you're the one who sent me the article. This is for you. Back off. So my point is, is that, you know what, Dak, sometimes you're going to have to suck it up. You're going to have to look for more endorsements if you want that money. And I get it. It's a prestige thing. You want to be the top five level high paid quarterbacks. It doesn't matter. Mahomes is going to blow everyone out of the water. Earn it first. Earn it and come back and then say you want more. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. Oh, Woo. All right, let's go down. Next thing we're gonna the next thing we're gonna get into is something that I'm gonna enjoy doing every week. I'm gonna call it the Green Bay Greg Translator. And what that is, is I'm gonna dive through different quotes from sports figures over the course of the week and kind of let you know what they probably meant to say. First one, Chase Elliott. Unfortunately, it is what it is. This is when he was in contention for the Coca-Cola 600. And when they went into a caution with less than five laps to go, his pit crew called him in for a pit stop. He en it ends up being the worst decision ever because no other guy did it. They called, they stopped the race for 90 minutes, whatever it was. But the bottom line is what he meant to say, what the F leave me out there five laps to go. I'll push my car five laps if I have to Oh, feel bad for the guy. Same thing happened to his dad years earlier. Next one, this is Jalen Rose referencing Lance Armstrong. I don't respect cheaters. Jalen, I know some people really don't have the greatest of memories, and my memory might be a little better than most. You did play with a guy. His name is Chris Weber. Look it up. Remember what happened in Michigan? Remember why you guys don't have titles hanging around? He cheated. And don't tell me, oh, it's not the same thing. I get it, but cheating's cheating. Dude, back off. You know what? Why don't you talk to Chris Weber first? Oh. Next one. This is Reggie Bush. When asked if college athletes should be paid, it's going to destroy some people. Referencing that some people who don't come from a lot of money. You know, and then they get money. It'll destroy them. Reggie, this is the time when someone asks you a question. You're allowed to say, you know what? I'm going to pass on this one. I don't think I'm an appropriate person to talk about this. Dude, you got your Heisman Trophy taken away because they found out that your parents were taking money. Dude, it's going to destroy some people. Yeah, you, your credibility. Back off. Might not need, you don't need to answer this one. You know, step away from the table. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Next one is the best one. Tom Brady. Line it up on second shot on hole seven, on the seventh hole. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's third shot, par five. And uh, Ch Chuck's giving him a hard time. Charles Barkley's giving him a hard time, telling him that he's going to give Charles is going to give Tom a couple of strokes on the side. He can beat him. Tom takes the shot. Everyone's going nuts. Tom looks, pumps his fist, looks at the camera, and goes, "Suck on that, Charles." Here's what he meant to say. Now nah, that's about right. Pretty much nailed it. Suck on that, Charles. That was the ultimate scoreboard in your face. All right. The next thing I want to get into outside the arena. And uh, let's see, see we got it. 
Yeah. Thanks, dog. All right. Outside outside the arena. Now, outside the world of sports, we just went through a five-week, 10-part documentary on the Chicago Bulls. Now, E60 on ESPN is doing a couple parts series on Lance Armstrong. Here's the thing, Lance. Your credibility is gone. Um, you're never going to get it back. You lied to too many people. You hurt too many people. But here's how you can maybe get back your credibility. You were diagnosed with stage four testicular cancer. While you were a competitive racer, you were given a death sentence, essentially. You fought back. You came back to win seven Tours de France. And I think that's how you say it. I don't think it's Tour de France. I think it's Tours de France. Anyway, beside the point, why don't you sit down with the people at Johns Hopkins or at the Mayo Clinic or all these people that spend endless hours and billions of dollars every year trying to find a cure for cancer? Open up and be honest with them. Tell them when you took EPO, how many, how often you took it, what your training regimen was like, because you know what these guys are doing? They are throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks. And if you possibly could have done something that would have maybe led to you being in remission, then cured from cancer, you owe it to society to be honest with someone and tell them what you did, because it could lead to a cure. For the love of God, Lance, for once in your life, do something honest. Do something right. And I'm sorry if it's going to ruin your reputation even more. It's not about you. Hundreds of thousands of people die every year from cancer. If for some reason you did something that in part could lead to a cure, you owe it to them. Thanks, Dad. I think my dad's laughing his ass off. Usually people just laugh at me. I think now he's laughing with me. All right. So that's that's my, you know, that, that's my take on that. The next thing I want to get into is my seven-day forecast, things to look forward to in sports. What I really want everyone to kind of look forward to in sports is what sports start coming back and when. Um, right now, they're talking about NBAs kind of doing some um, some practicing. You know, you can only have a certain number of people in and out in an arena at a time, uh, and it's great. You know, keep it small. But as it progresses, why? Because we're going to get to a point by August, I believe, and I'm not just saying this as a sports fan, I'm saying this as a realist, that we're going to get to a point come August where high school sports are going to be back with precautions. We're going to get to a point where college football is back, and a lot of that has to do with monetary. There's a lot of money involved, and pro football is going to be back. And I'm going to enjoy every second of it. But I think the reason why they're bringing things back right now slowly is because it's going to it's a transition. We're coming back and sports are coming back. And what we're going to really notice is that as time goes on and people aren't getting infected at this incredible rate that everyone's afraid of, it's going to stay moderate. We did flatten the curve, hopefully, that people are going to become more tolerant of being able to do things and, uh, you know, go out in public and, uh, you know, interact and go to sporting events and things like that. It's going to look different. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's something to look forward to. All right, closing my show. This is <laughs> sorry. This is the Green Bay Greg Challenge. Now that things have opened up in a lot of states, especially the two states that uh, I'm, I'm familiar with, Minnesota, things are slowly leading up. What I ask everyone to do is hold on to that sense of community. Um, do something nice. A random act of kindness every day that you leave your house, your apartment, your townhouse, your condo, whatever it is, your mansion. You know what? Do me a favor. Buying a cup of coffee for the person behind you in Starbucks is not a random act of kindness. If you are willing to spend $4 on a cup of coffee and the person behind you already ordered their coffee and they're willing to spend $4, that's not a random act of kindness. That's helping one well-off person uh, from another well-off person. You know, put put uh, 20, you, know, you see ladies struggling in the store help her out with some groceries, put them away. I, I, it sounds funny, but I take advantage of my height. A lot, not a lot of stuff in the stores right now. I'm helping old ladies all the time look for something on the top shelf. It's a simple ra random, random act of kindness, but trying to find to do some, trying to find something to do every day, giving a shopping cart to someone, you know, helping someone find something. You know what? You see an old lady in the, in a car, help, help ask her if she wants you to wash her windows for her fill or gas tank, whatever the case is. But you know what? All I'm asking is that we hold on to this sense of community. 
We're so insistent on wearing masks and it's great. We're so insistent on social distancing and it's great. It's important, but it doesn't need to end there. What needs to happen is we need to maintain this level of community, this one person helping another person out and it becomes infected, infectious, I'm sorry, infectious. A lot better than this disease ever will, this virus ever will. Let's make that be what is contagious. That's all I got for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Green Bay Greg out until next week.